Hi everyone and welcome. I know this wasn't a scheduled stream, but you know me, sometimes I do these unscheduled ones. Um, this is Dual Universe. I've been looking forward to playing this for quite a long time. Um, I've had some technical uh, problems. I couldn't log in um, when I actually got it, but I get in now after a bit of a wait. Um, looks like it's going to be a really good game. I'm still in the tutorial. I haven't really done anything in the game apart from log in, walk around a bit. Make sure it is working and not going to crash. Um, even though it may do, as it is an open beta at the moment. Um, but we'll see what happens. Um, so let's get into this. We've just got to do through this tutorial thing before we can do anything. I'm not absolutely sure because I logged off and then logged back in. I think I need to... Very good. The dispenser just gave you a new tool that is now stored inside your inventory. It did. The inventory contains everything you can carry around with you. Okay. Let's open it by pressing the inventory key. And that is... What is the inventory key? Oh, it's I. It's telling me in the chat. The inventory okay. is a central interface for managing everything you carry around with you. It contains items like tools, materials, elements, or blueprints. Let's say this is the first time... We will time look into it in more detail through the various specialized First time I tutorials. played this, so... Um, for now, locate the repair tool that was just given to you, and simply drag and drop okay. it into well, we the can free do that. slot that, below. That's not hard. Well we can done. Do that. Note that the inventory does not have an infinite capacity. It is restricted in volume. Thanks to the nanopack technology, this volume is pretty huge, but still, better keep an eye on the size of objects you store. Okay, noted. Now, simply close the inventory by pressing the close cross on the top. Okay. We are now ready to continue downstairs. This time, see my we will need to oh, use an elevator. I went on green. Move to the designated waypoint. All right, where's the elevator? Uh, it's not as optimized as I would like it to be. Elevators um, are connected together via up and down links. Stepping still onto looks pretty an good. elevator and pressing the crouch key or the jump key will allow you to transfer to the next or previous elevator in the chain. It's Simply step on mm. the elevator and press the crouch key to go down. Mm. This is a lot more, a little bit more optimized than, than the alpha was, but um, it's, it, it's it's getting there. Welcome to the main room. You can get back any time by stepping on the same elevator and pressing the jump key to go up. I don't want to. In front of you is a miniature reproduction of the Ark ship. You can perhaps see the real Ark ship through the windows in the distance. Pretty. Let's try to also find it on the map. To open the map, press the map key. It's pretty. This is Alioth, the planet on which you currently stand. Okay. You can rotate the planet by clicking and dragging it with the mouse. You can also zoom in and out with the mouse wheel. Each of these tiles is a territory you can claim. Tiles in red are already claimed. Tiles in purple are non-claimable and mostly exist around the Ark ship. The Ark ship is represented by a small icon in the center of the purple tiles area. At any time, you can center onto your position on the map by pressing the center icon on the top left. Try it now. Okay, so the purple ones you can't claim. Alright. The red ones have been claimed. So there's quite a lot of unclaimed territory, territory on Alioth still. Which is good. Um, which is really good. Since it's been out in beta for, what, two days now? So, um... It looks like there's some land that, that we can get, so that that's good. Or or have a base here on Alioth anyway, and go from there. But let's carry on going through the tutorial. You can also mark any place on the surface of the planet to create a waypoint. Waypoints are displayed in your HUD so that they are easy to track. To set a waypoint, simply right-click on a point on the map and select Set as Destination. All right, well, anywhere? Okay. Very good. There are still many areas on the map that you will learn to use over time. For example, the selector area here allows you to list your constructs, review bookmarks, and see any available warp beacons or other points of interest. In the lower right corner, you can find a list of current objectives in a tutorial, usually with hints on how to achieve them. For now, let's just close the map. Press the upper right close button. Geez, you're pushy, Ophelia. I don't remember you being this pushy. Okay, we will click it. You may have seen on the map that certain territory tiles are claimed. 
To claim a tile, you must deploy a territory unit on the ground. Let's have a look at one. Follow the waypoint. Okay. As you can see, it's quite huge. Once a territory That's unit is deployed it. onto a tile, this tile belongs to you. It means you can start to build constructs on it, you can decide who holds rights to dig the ground, and whom else can also build next to you. Territory units are quite expensive and will probably not be the first thing you deploy on Alioth. Instead, we have a much better way to let you grab a piece of land. Let's discover this now. Follow the waypoint behind you to the elevator on the end of the room and move okay. up. This will take us to the observatory. Oh, this way. Wish we could move a little bit faster than this, but hey, okay. Um. Welcome to the observatory. It reminds me so From much here, of. Um, you should be able to see Alioth's moons in the sky. One of them is a very special moon, called a sanctuary moon. We will explain what that means, but first, let's try to locate it. Let's open the map again by pressing the map key. The map also contains a solar system view. Click on the system tab to open it. But the moving around really reminds me of Empyrean with uh, crouching and, and jumping to go up and down the lifts, which is, which is cool. We're in the system view. Here you can see all the planets currently accessible in the system. I think Select she's drunk. Alia, I think I actually got ahead of her there. you currently are located by clicking on it. As you can see, Alioth has three moons. One of them looks a bit like a twin of Alioth and is marked with a small shield icon. This is the Sanctuary Twin Moon, or the Twin for short. Select it by clicking on it. Excellent. Now, let's click the set destination. Good. Now, before we leave, let's have a look at the surface of this moon and find out why it's called the Sanctuary. This Twin Moon, just like Alioth or any other planet, is also covered with tiles that you can claim. A sanctuary moon is a moon where no combat will ever occur, as it is a safe zone. This means that every territory you claim will remain yours forever, and nobody can take your belongings or build anything there without your consent. Wow. This is a great way to create a safe haven to store your valuables and build your home. Getting to a sanctuary moon and claim a tile should be your first goal in dual universe. You can claim only one tile on a sanctuary moon, and you will need a special sanctuary territory unit for that purpose. Let's go and get one. It's free for all new Novians. Cool. We can do that. Close the map window. Notice how the sanctuary twin moon is now identified by the waypoint in the sky. There is a shuttle service, which we will introduce at the end of this tutorial, that can bring you there. Awesome. Now, let's get your Sanctuary Territory Unit. Simply follow the- Fantastic! Now that you are equipped with your Territory Unit, Can't let's tell I've done this to before, the rest of the tutorial. <laughs> Head down via the nearby elevators. It's first time playing in the beta though. Now is the time to present the and key been pillar activities that are available for Novians. Each of these will be presented here quickly, and you will later be able to discover more about them via the Institutes and their dedicated tutorials. Let's head to the mining station first. Follow the waypoint towards the downstairs platform. I'm not sure about her voice either. It, it seems a bit dry, but I don't know. I, I guess it's still in beta. Mining is one of the primary so activities. So hopefully they will change that a little. This is how you acquire raw materials if you don't simply buy them on the markets. Those materials are located either on the planet's surface or they can be buried kilometers deep underground. Surface materials have a low value while more valuable materials, from level 1 to level 5, are found deeper. As is often the case, to access the surface mining activity, you will need a tool. Here is the harvest tool, which is highlighted in the toolbar okay. below. Pointing at harvestable elements on the surface and clicking on them, while the harvest tool is equipped, will allow you to collect them. Press the quick access key for this tool to equip it. You Great! Unfortunately, there are no surface harvestable elements here, so you will need to go through the dedicated tutorial in the Mining Institute to practice. 
Now, unequip this tool by pressing again the quick access key corresponding to the equipped slot but I want to mine the pretty. Give me the pretty. Come on. You're mean. Tempt me with that and then take it away. Deep underground, you will need a way to scan for available materials in a large radius. This is the job of the scanner tool, highlighted here. Once in close range, the directional detector will help you pinpoint the location of the material. Finally, to collect the found material, or simply to dig your way down, you will use the mining tool, highlighted just below. You'll learn more about this in the interactive mining tutorial, located inside the Mining Institute. Now, let's talk about the markets. Get close to the waypoint. Markets are an essential part of Novian life. This is where you can sell the materials you mine, but also buy anything that you might need. Markets are physically located in the world. They are accessible either via market pod units, like the one in front of you, or via the integrated nanomarket I interface. I think this one's for giants, so. The nanomarket <laughs> interface <laughs> allows you size. to browse markets at a distance, but cannot help you to deposit or recover items that are traded. It's huge. For that, you will need to directly interact with a market pod. Very quickly, let's have a look at what the nanomarket interface looks okay. like. Okay. To I'm going to it, a smaller press one. Press the nano market key. Okay, do I have to use this one? You can search no, for a particular item that you would like to trade by there. using these search boxes. Nitron is a fuel you will often use and frequently buy. Type Nitron in the search box to get access to the Nitron markets. You can see the market orders for Nitron. These are all the intentions to buy or sell Nitron by other players on various markets in the solar system. You can pick the cheapest or the nearest offer depending on your priorities. Awesome. You can also create And if you don't know, I'm sorry I'm speking orders, over, but if you don't know, we'll the economy can be very player oriented and driven. We will look kind into of this like, at the um, end of this tutorial. So it's going to be really cool. When we will buy and there's going to be um, player vehicle. structures and planets for now, and let's space close stations. For the nanomarket interface and continue our visit. Okay. Let's now have so a look at another So I'm actually looking forward to that. Activity, so that's going to be cool. Industry. Go to the industry. In front of you is an assembly line. One of the many industry unit elements in the game, which includes things like chemical reactors, glass furnaces, refineries, or smelters. Each industry unit type is specialized through certain types of recipes. The assembly line can take ingredients in an entry container, like the one here on the left, and then run a recipe to craft elements. The elements are stored in the exit container, as seen here on the yep. right. That can be chained as an entry container for another industry unit. To select the recipe, there is an industry unit interface that you will learn about in the dedicated industry tutorial inside the Industry Institute. Thankfully, entry level recipes for simple products can be run without an industry unit. For that, you can use your integrated nano crafter. Before we open the nano crafter, let's get some ingredients we will need from the nearby dispenser. Approach the dispenser and press the activate key. Where's the dispenser? Is it the one that's flashing? I think so. Excellent. Yes, it is. Now, let's open the nano crafter by pressing the nano crafter okay, key. If I remember. We okay. Great. This interface allows you to pick a recipe and run it in the background to produce simple products. Oh. On the left is a selection oh, area to make the recipe. You currently have just a few ingredients which allow a limit. Excellent. Now, let's click on Nitron Fuel to select. The panel that appeared shows you the necessary ingredients, which you just retrieved from awesome. the dispenser. It also offers the possibility to add this crafting job to the queue. Simply click on Add to Queue to start producing a batch of 100 liters of Nitron Fuel. I normally don't do the tutorial or stream the tutorial, but this game's a little bit different. It's, it's very complex, so I thought I'll go for it with you all and then... Uh, if I carry on streaming it, then, you know, it's uh, it's going to make a lot more sense than going through things. But, um, Fantastic. 
As you can see, your job is, it is now a very complex game. You'll have a batch of but a very, it's going to be if they can achieve what they're setting out to achieve, it's going to be absolutely be all for this amazing. Short introduction. There is of course more to know, and you can go to the Industry Institute to go through the specialized tutorials. I'm actually quite glad they're doing now, a basic tutorial for everything. Window. So in general, crafting jobs especially for new users, because in, get, in a lot of games, especially like Eve and stuff, you get a lot completed. of chat spam in, in trade and stuff. And it's like, how would you do this? How would you do that? Okay, now let's learn about building. Yes, and let's how build. you can use all these materials and elements to create amazing constructs. Just turn to the station on your right. The one to my right? Oh, I think it's this one. Did they change it? Yeah, they did. This bizarre construction in front of you is called a construct. It is a mix of deployed voxel materials used to sculpt a shape and deployed elements to make it functional. The first element you deploy to create a construct is a core yep. unit, as highlighted here. It will create a building. It really reminds you of Imperium so much. To build. Core units come in different sizes but and this also be a lot specializations. Than Static Hopefully. core units are for ground buildings, dynamic core units are for ships or anything that moves, and space core unit are for space stations. Once you have created your building zone, you can start to deploy matter as voxel honeycomb materials, or voxels for short. You have a large palette of tools and materials to help you sculpt absolutely anything you like, regardless of shape or complexity. Finally, you can add elements to your construct in the form of engines, doors, lights, fuel tanks, or any of the hundreds of available you can build elements like that, that up provide there. functionality to your build. That's actually pretty cool. Building is a vast subject. It is advised to go through the various building tutorials located inside the Building Institute. Note that the building you are currently in, as well as all the other buildings outside, are entirely made with the in-game building tools. Yep. Also, some of the cool awesome. constructs you can build not only include static buildings, but also space or atmospheric ships. Let's have a look at this now. Follow the waypoint to the next station. And as a player, you can build a building like this. You can build a city, and it's the scope of this is just going to be amazing. This is a surface speeder, a very basic ground atmospheric vehicle that is both convenient and cheap to build, and allows you to move around planet surfaces. You'll be gifted one at the end of this tutorial. Everything in this speeder is functional and plays a role in making it work. Let's quickly review the different elements that it's composed of. Here are the hover engines, which help the speeder float above the ground. These extra small atmospheric engines are used for propulsion. I feel like we need a flight attendant forward. pointing to these now. <laughs> it just really kind of reminds me that this tutorial. Fuel tank. And the exits are here, Adjusters here, and here, and here. Elements used to create rotational forces and help balance your ship. You also need brakes to be able to slow down. And finally, you need a piloting seat to be able we to fly. We don't need no brakes. What are you talking about? This piloting Come on. Seat activates the ship, which is how you take control of it. All these elements are orchestrated via a Lua script that is generated automatically for you. But you can also modify it via a right-click menu on the piloting seat to create absolutely any kind of control you like. Note that piloting in the atmosphere of a planet or in outer space can be very different and involves different types of engines and design. Gravity may ground you if you have a heavy cargo on a high-gravity planet, while it won't matter in the darkness of space. In Dual Universe, Piloting is an art, a subtle interplay between your piloting skills and the craftsmanship of the ship designer. You can learn more about piloting in the dedicated tutorials in the Piloting Institute. Piloting is not only about navigating your ship, but will often also involve combat. Look up at the fighter above your head. I've highlighted the weapons that are equipped on this small They're ship. Tiny. Come on. There are many more types of weapons, ammunition, and damage types. Each has a specific role. I think they need to speed up the tu a tutorial fighter, a little bit. It's, it's starting to drag giant on. Giant battleships with a crew of hundreds of people, each assigned to a particular task. There is much more to discover about combat, so you should definitely visit the military institute to know more. Not today. Not today. 
Now, let's go to the last station and learn about organizations. Follow the waypoint. Organizations are a fundamental part of your social life as a Novian. They are groups that you can join, covering things like nations, corporations, alliances, or even group of pirates. Ooh, Let's pirates. have a quick look at the organization interface. Open it by pressing. As you can expect, you are not part of any organization of yet. Let's click the search button to find out what are the currently existing organizations. You haven't actually let me get out the tutorial yet. How am I supposed to be in an organization? You can search through this list, focusing on open organizations, which are recruiting or sorting by member numbers, name or language. To apply for an organization, you need to open its details page. Click on the name of any of the listed organizations to open its details page. Let's do this one. I'm, I'm not gonna. I'm In not gonna join window, one right now. I might actually create one. I don't know yet. We'll see. This organization. We will see. This area will allow you to apply to join this organization, along with a place to write a quick introduction to go along with it. Joining an organization can be a considerable boost for your new life. That's as a really good uh, manifesto Choose there. Though. Wisely. You can now close the detail <laughs> it even window. Say any. You can, of course, also decide to create your organization from scratch, even if this is a little bit more advanced. For example, managing an organization involves legates and members, rules, voting, and management yes, of rights. This is something you will discover and a later. Fee of 500, you can now close the organization Don't interface. Don't forget that, Ophelia. It costs money. Excellent. You have covered the basics. Now, let's move to the next step and talk about talents. Follow the waypoint. If I must. I am glad they do have this tutorial, but I said I think it's it's draw, drawing on a bit long because what we're at we're at now twenty five minutes. To start with, let's open the talent window by pressing the talent key. And um, um that's F two, I believe. Talents define your character ability. Which I guess people are a good start. Into categories I get that. That are displayed but... all around your avatar in this window. Here, for example, is the Mining and Inventory group. Click on it. Excellent. Now, look on the left at the list of categories that correspond to this group. Each category hosts several talents. Click on the Inventory. Finally, select the Nanopack Upgrades talent. Very good. Talents can be upgraded from level 1 up to level 5 by spending talent points in increasing quantities. Each level acquired provides a boost to a certain characteristic, described just below its name. For example, here the nanopack upgrades helps to increase the size of the inventory by 200 liters for each talent level acquired. Okay. That's good. The amount of talent points you currently have is displayed in the upper part of the screen. Talent points automatically accumulate, even when you are offline, at a slow rate, shown here. To consume points to instantly train a particular talent, you could simply use the invest points button I just highlighted, assuming you have enough points for the talent you are aiming for. Most of the time, you have very little accumulated points, because the rate of accumulation is slow. Instead, you can decide to queue a talent, and enter an active learning phase, which considerably boosts the talent point acquisition rate. Let's train the first level of the nanopack upgrades talent. Press the queue talent button. As you can see, the selected talent now displays in the queue. You can queue several you need to talents check this out to as well. train it's one after from the six other. To Note that minute. dependencies between talents might exist, and you should train talents in the right order. See how the acquisition rate is much faster during active learning when a talent is in a queue. Acquired points are immediately assigned to the talent. But again, this is very much like trained. Eve. So if you played Eve it before, is a good practice um, the talent system of, um, is pretty much the, the same. Queue to be able to train them without interruption. Note that talents also train when you are offline. So make sure to always have a filled queue that spans a long duration. Exactly. If the queue ends when you are not online, you will fall back to the slow talent point accumulation rate. Take your time to review the existing talents, and think about how you want to plan them out. There is no rule of thumb here, you can become hyper-specialized, 
or decide to be a jack of all trades. I'm going to queue another um, nano pack upgrade because I'm, I'm sure ready, we're going to need you space. Can close the talent and I can window. always change that later if I need to, but that means after five minutes I don't have to jump in here and change it. I have, you know, 37 minutes. So. At this point, you might be confused by the vast number of interfaces and their various nope. shortcuts. Thankfully, you don't have to remember all that. Let's enter into free mouse mode by pressing the free mouse key. Um, which is tab. The menu on the left gathers all the quick accesses to the available interfaces. And since your mouse is now free, you can simply click on them. Note that you can also select the tools in your toolbar and generally interact with many more Again, I think we need a flight attendant pointing. <laughs> but you got my One mouse pointed. example is the notification icon in the lower right part of the screen, which you can now access. Now is also a good time to learn about the Codex, which is a general written tutorial about... You can browse the many topics in the selection menu here. Normally when you leave the free mass mode, temporary windows are closed, but not the windowed Codex. So it can be helpful to pin some help content on the side while you play the game. For now, we are going to close this window, as we will need the screen space for the remainder of this tutorial. Yeah, Simply, as we are talking about make help, me click it. <laughs> let me mention hints. Hints will appear regularly on the right so during to, the game, uh, depending on the your X actions, rather than to give you some pushing help. the button. I've triggered a hint for you right you now. Did. You can review them later from the hint window, or simply by pressing the hint key, so you will never miss one. Okay. You can now close the free mouse mode and return. Now, it's time to discover a really fun activity that is available to you right from the start. Let's go through the large exits, down the stairs, to the waypoint. Is it this way? I can't remember how to get out of here. It's been a while. I think it's this way, actually. Come on, Coom. You can't be that lost. Welcome to the surrogate VR stations. These stations can be used to enter a VR session to control a remote robot in telepresence. Mm -hmm. This is a fantastic way to discover locations and familiarize yourself with the game, perhaps even visit a large organization headquarters, or simply play tourists in extraordinary places. You first enter into a VR station like this one by activating it. You can then select the destination site among those that are public and are made accessible to you. You take control of a robot that awaits in a distant pod. Anyone can deploy a pod in their construct and make it public, so that visitors can arrive. As a robot, your capacities are limited however, so this is just a way to visit an area remotely, as opposed to teleporting there exactly. directly. These are fake stations, you cannot use them. But I will show you the real one on the way out, a bit later. One last thing. You may have noticed those buttons with a question mark on them. They are info buttons. They are placed in front of points of interest and you can press on them to display an informational message. Try it now and activate this button. And the telepresence is actually kind of cool. Um, it, just think of it as you, you have a drone basically that can go around places. Um, and then uh, organizations or people um, on you know at their bases like or headquarters like she said. Um, can have one made public so people can connect to them. It's actually kind of cool. Great. Info buttons close themselves automatically, but you can also force them out with the cancel key. Another powerful way to discover things by yourself in dual universe is to use the helper system. Simply point at anything in the world or in the user interface and press the helper key. Try it now on something in the world around you. Good, let's continue. The next important thing to learn about is the notion of rights. Everything you own can be shared with others, but it is by default only accessible to you. For example, try to deactivate the highlighted force field on the left. You can do it by pointing at it and pressing the interaction key and see oh, what on happens. The left. I don't know my left and right. What's going on? Come on, Coom. You received an action forbidden message telling you that Denied. the owner of this element did not share it with you. This is actually how you can make your construct secure against intruders. Now, in the same way, try to activate the left button that controls the light above. Okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. 
Again, the right to activate has not been given to you. Now instead, try to activate the button on the right. I, as you can see, this time Let me worked. out of here! You can control the light by pressing this button. To set up an element's rights in a simple way, you can use the- Here, you can access the share element or share Which is the right mouse button. In the construct so submenu, you know. which will allow you to grant so rights to others. you can set it public others. with people nearby or with, with friends. You can now close this menu by pressing the escape key or simply by clicking outside of it. A much more complex system is available for advanced players that allows for fine-tuned rights control, in particular for organizations. You can share whole constructs, manage specific types of rights, and create groups of players with certain abilities. But this is way beyond the scope of this introduction. You should try the rights we'll be here all week if she went through that. instead. <laughs> I believe you can use Lua now, code as well. Now, simply deactivate the force field on your right by pointing at it and pressing the interaction key. D very good. Now, let's continue our visit and go down to the lower Let, level using the elevator at the end of go. the room. On both sides of this corridor, you will find resurrection nodes. Drawing on the consequences of the Everett interpretation of quantum mechanics, we were able to design a technology which preserves your state of consciousness across multiple realities. We control the multiverse in order to branch you onto a version of reality where you happen to respawn here on one of these platforms whenever you die. So, you cannot really die, there is always a version of the universe in the multiverse where you wake up here. Beware that when you die, your inventory will not be preserved, so don't take death too lightly. It's important to know that you can craft or buy your own resurrection nodes. You can then install them in your ship or in your home. When respawning, you will always appear at the nearest active resurrection node, so in general you don't have to always get back to this room. Alright, so we are now almost ready to exit the starting Yay. hub. The last step is about collecting components to allow you to build a speeder ground vehicle. Follow the waypoint in the direction of the exit. Okay, so let's go to the dispenser over here. On both sides of this room are demonstration versions of two of the most popular UEF hovercraft speeders. These ground vehicles are extremely efficient to quickly navigate the surface of a planet, and you will need one during the mm. first steps of your journey. Distances are real, and transportation is a necessity. One way to acquire these speeders is to get a blueprint and to run it. Each of the highlighted dispenser will grant you oh, the choices, blueprint choices. of the speeder I don't know which next one to, to get, them. Man. Go get one of them by activating the dispenser. You can pick the one you prefer, or take them both. But which one do I prefer? That's the question. Hmm. I'm gonna go for the one on the right. It kind of looks a bit cooler. To run a blueprint, you can simply double click on it while it's in your inventory to deploy it into the world. You will be guided by the ghost bounding box that will appear. We will do that later. Another requirement to be able to deploy a blueprint is that you possess all its necessary components, materials, and elements. The dispenser in front of you contains everything needed to be able to deploy one speeder. Go to the dispenser and activate it. Now, don't deploy your blueprint right away. You may need to do that later on a sanctuary moon. But keep it in your inventory. It will soon come handy. Blueprints can also be created by you when you've built a construct and want to save a copy of it for yourself. You can of course also use it to mass produce your creations and to sell them. Blueprints are like intellectual property and can become very Which precious. Which is really indeed. cool. If you make something really cool, then that you can actually make said, quite a bit of money from it. This concludes the starting hub portion. Look around and that here. goes from this building room is also speeders, a sort of ships, small museum weapons, showing many all sorts elements of stuff. and materials that you may want to learn about. Simply press on the info buttons or use the helper key to know more about each element on display. When you are finished, you can exit through the front door. Welcome to the outside world. In front of you is a large parking area where many ships come and go, mostly to get to the nearby market. Let's actually go on the other side, where we will find the market and the institutes. Follow the waypoint ahead of you. 
And off we go. You can run by pressing the run modifier, but you can also Quite a few sprint ships at here great already, speed by hovering nice. above the ground thanks to your jetpack. Simply double tap the forward key. Try it now. Very good. Now, let's walk to the other side of That's the parking interesting lot. interesting design. Alright, so let's get over here. Tell you what, I, I wish they had Great. this in No Man's Sky. We are Sky. now at the district's market. Let's actually use it to buy a bit more fuel for our speeder. Head towards the waypoint and activate a market pod. Alright. Let's get in here and we get some more fuel. This market pod interface is very similar to the nano market interface we have already seen. There are however some key differences, which we will get to shortly. For now, let's search for Nitron Fuel by typing Nitron in the upper search box. Here again, you can see the different market orders for Nitron Fuel, with the current market's name appearing in orange. Since there are sell orders on this market for Nitron, you will be able to go through the simplified instant buy option. Instant buy will pick the best offer on the market where you currently okay. are, and is a very good method for beginners to easily buy something. Simply click on the local instant buy. Now, enter a quantity here, like 10 liter. When you are ready, simply confirm your purchase with the confirm button. Congratulations. You just acquired Yay. Nitron. However, it will not go directly like into your inventory. <laughs> you Instead, now have Nitron. like anything you buy on a given market, it is stored inside the market container, waiting for you. On the left side is your current inventory. On the right side is the market container's contents. Here you can see the Nitron you just purchased. No, I can't. Note that if you want to put I've a sell put order on something, you can simply drag and drop it from your inventory to the market container. A quicker option is to use the local instant sell window that will try to get you the best price on offer on the local market. Now, to receive your fuel, simply drag and drop the oh, Nitron from the market so far container behind me to your right inventory. Now. I've done it already. Oh, is it going to get stuck now? Because I, I, I did it really quickly. We have to fix her. Oh, no, oh. Just do 10. Oh, dear, dear, dear. I've broken it. I'm going to have to buy some more. I think that would be the easiest way. Now, Coom, you shouldn't get ahead of yourself. So let's do that again, and we'll do 10 more. And it should be in here, and now hopefully, should I pick that up? Great. You are now an accomplished <laughs> trader. Jeez. When you are ready, you can close the market interface by clicking on the highlighted button. Before we go to the Institute Plaza, Let's have a look at the connected surrogate BR station, just behind you. Follow the indicated waypoint. Oh, it's over here. I invite you to come back here at the end of this nope. tutorial, and activate any of these surrogate we BR stations. We want to go to the Sanctuary Moon. You will be presented with a list of incredible sites to visit we don't hang around anywhere in, this place. in Dual come Universe, on. through a remote-controlled robot. You can sort them by the number of recent visitors, to see the most popular first. This is a great way to discover what is possible in Dual Universe. Let's now go in the direction of the plaza, but follow the waypoint to the district teleporters first. We'll probably um, look at those at later on, but I want to try and get building. In at front the of you are moon. teleporters that grant you instant access to any of the 10 districts that are placed around the Ark ship. Each of these districts is identical to the one you are currently in. But Novians will start the game in any one of them at random. You can use these teleporters to quickly reach for a particular market, or to meet with friends on another district. Now, let's follow the waypoint to one of the most important place of this district, the Institute Plaza, just at the top of the stairs. In front of you is a map of the plaza, with the different institutes around. There is an institute for each core activity in the game. Go and visit them after we are done. They are fantastic ways to discover the many possibilities that are offered to you. 
Also, each of them hosts teleporters to interactive tutorials for activities like mining, piloting, building, market operations, industry, etc. Note that this district is not unique. As we saw just before, there are 10 similar districts spread in close proximity to the ARC ship. We have visited the teleporters available between them and available near the market for convenience. Each Alioth district is also paired with a similar district on the Sanctuary Twin Moon. So, you will find plenty of opportunities to get back to the institutes and tutorials wherever you are. Finally, let's get to the last step of our introduction, the Twin Moon Shuttle yes, service. <laughs> follow the waypoint. Now, make a left turn and follow the waypoint again. Um, we can come back to the Institute, so I will at another time. Um, they are well worth doing. Um, Here we are. In front of you is a button that you will be able to use to call for a free Sanctuary Moon Shuttle service. This shuttle will connect you to a similar district on the Sanctuary Twin Moon. I will guide you to get there as soon as this introduction is over, and claim a tile for yourself, using the Sanctuary Territory unit you collected what earlier. We want to do. Let's take a look at the shuttle, which is on your right. Um, there's quite a few actually. Are you gonna let me get on this shuttle? At this stage, you may not want to deploy your speeder blueprint. If you do it here, on Alioth, you will have to dismantle it before you can pocket it and eventually redeploy it yeah, again on the Sanctuary right Twin Moon. To learn how to dismantle a speeder, you should go to the building tutorial in the Building Institute. You should rather keep your blueprint ready to deploy when you are on the Sanctuary Twin Moon, where you will undoubtedly need it, to travel to a free tile, before claiming it. Which would do. Remember, to deploy your speeder blueprint, simply double click on it in your inventory. Alright. That's it. You should now be prepared for the incredible adventure ahead of you. I will always be near you to help if you need. Remember to visit the tutorials, discover the beauty of the world with surrogate stations, and learn more about Dual Universe via the Codex and the Institutes. Alright, can we go to the Twin Moon now? Mm, just oh, one more geez. thing. I'll put some broad <laughs> objectives for you in the upper left of the screen. Okay. These are suggestions of milestones to follow to properly build up your experience in Dual Universe, and they are very much recommended. Oh, Ophelia, come feel on. Feel free to follow these at any time you feel ready, or to bypass them entirely. Check the objectives section of the map for more details on how to complete these objectives. From now on, I'll be much less directive with you on how to do things. The first of these milestones is for you to reach the Sanctuary Twin Moon. You can use the shuttle service right next to you. Safe travel, Novian. I'll see you there. Right, and off we go. We'll go over to Sanctuary Moon and we will get our tile and then we can figure out about our doing some other stuff, but we need to find a home first. Hopefully it won't too, take too long. That tutorial took way too long. That was a 46 minute tutorial and I was, I was rushing ahead on a lot of stuff, so... I'm glad that they added it in, as I said before, but I find it, it's probably a bit too long. I think they need to stretch it out a little in in other pieces rather than doing it all in one chunk i don't know maybe that's just me maybe that's just me on how i see things but you know i'm glad it's there and here we are on the twin moon which is the sanctuary and if you wasn't paying attention the sanctuary is where it's a peace zone so uh, if you build Welcome here, no on one twin. can mess with your now, stuff. Your next step is to try to locate a free tile on the map, get there and claim it. Try to find a tile not too far from a market, identified with the M icon, this will be useful later. To help you visualize the boundary of a tile in the 3D right, world, look. you can also press the enhanced visualization HUD key to toggle this Not, display. Uh, Try it there. now. What do you want me to do, otherwise you're gonna... Okay, we'll do that first. Excellent. You are now ready to go hunt for your free tile. It's probably also a good time for you to deploy your speeder now, so that you can travel faster. 
If you want to do so, go in your inventory and double click on the speeder blueprint, then deploy it in the okay, world. Okay, I'll do that in a minute. Now, to proceed further, I'll be waiting until you have deployed your sanctuary territory unit. Well, let me find a place first. Let's, let's have a look. Um, so we're here. Uh, I don't know. We might want to move to a different... To a different um, city. I don't know. This one's kind of got a lot going on in it. It's got some industry going there. That's cool. Hmm. How many around where we are? Because it's about the same everywhere you go. Decisions, Coombe. Decisions. This is where you have to make all these decisions. Um, yeah. See, that's up in the hills. That's on a desert. I'm thinking resources as well. That one's by water. I think I might actually go here. It's not adjacent to any other ones. It's not too far. It's only like four spots away from water. And it's not that far from the thing. It's actually near enough. It's not too far to go to the other markets as well. So, hmm. Let's set that as a destination. We're going to go there and we we we, we check that out. And we uh, where's my speeder blueprint? Um, build that there. Should we rename it something else? No, let's just leave it. Congratulations. You have successfully deployed your speeder blueprint. Now, the next step is to put fuel in the fuel tank. For this, simply open your inventory by pressing the inventory key. Great. Search the content of your inventory and look for the nitron fuel. Got it. Double click on its icon to automatically equip the refuel tool and load it with nitron. Locate the fuel tank on the speeder. It's highlighted. Aim at it and hold the left mouse button until you fill it entirely. We need gas attendants. That's what we need. <laughs> Excellent. You're ready to go explore. Hopefully I've got enough fuel to get, get to, to where I'm going, but it, we should be able to. Target your speeder seat and activate it by holding the interaction button to start piloting the speeder. I will leave you on your own now. Right. Um, Enjoy exploring dual universe. The question is, where is that? I can't remember. I've got to try and find where my marker is. I did put a marker, didn't I? I thought I set a destination. Which one was it? It was um, this one, isn't it? Question is, okay, oh, there it is over there. All right, so oh, I haven't done this in a while. I forgot how tetchy these things are. <laughs> well, hopefully, this won't take too long to get there. So the controls on speeders and ships are very much like um, Imperium. If you've ever played that, then you know how the speeders and they're, they're quite tetchy on how they move. Um, and then you've got the space and C to go up and down. So this is going to take uh, about a minute to get there, I think. 
which is fine because it's not too far away and it's a bit out of the way as well which is nice I like to be a bit out of the way in the backwoods so to speak that sounds terrible but you know it's nice hopefully no organisation takes are over with those other tiles but we, we will see I'll probably end up creating one or joining one at some point when I don't know um, but we'll see Someone's territory unit. Go around that. I think we're about halfway there. Only about 17 kilometers away. My fuel's doing alright. We have 86 minutes of fuel, so we have no problem getting forward and back. Two there and back, I should say. I can't speak. Obviously, I need more coffee. But if any of you guys jump in on on this game, um, definitely hit me up. Um, I'm happy to play with with you. There's lots of stuff that requires a lot of um, collaboration, and it is a really really big game. Tell you what, the rendering is kind of slow, and I have this on. I don't have it on ultra because I wasn't sure about ultra on this, but I have it on high. And I have a Radium 5700 um, XT, so it's not the slowest one in the world. I, d I need to change the strafe controls, because uh, if I remember, it's like Alt D and Alt A or something like that, which is ridiculous. You should strafe and then have the, the turning. But we're off to find our home. So we're going to go ahead and um, claim it. Hopefully there's going to be some resources around and we can build some stuff. Because um, the whole point of this game is uh, building yourself up, getting some ships together, getting some economy going, bringing in some money. I'm glad we start off with a decent amount of money though. That's, that's, that's pretty good. A lot of games where you start off with zero, so... If we have some, I'm not sure how much. I think it was like three hundred thousand. But once I get the resources together and, and stuff, we can get a uh, another unit, and we can either do it on the actual Alios, or we can go to a different planet and uh, and put one put one down. So it's on the other side of this lake, which we're going across right now. But it's pretty. I like it. It's pretty pretty. So I can go a bit faster than this, but this this is this is fine. I'm not maxing it. Well, I'm on a, like 80, 81 percent thrust. about six kilometers away so not too far not too far now deploy your century territory unit I will when I get there if I can find it in my inventory and it's not lost I'm just looking I think I'm gonna have to move my um, my actual bars at the top there they're kind of blocking stuff aren't they I might just turn them off for now and I will um, move them before I stream this again, but I'm going to switch them off for now. And, um, that way, you'll be able to see a bit better. There you go.
Okay, so we're getting pretty close. So it's around here, just over here, I think. Because a lot of this was already claimed. Because you can see, um, on, when I'm going past it on the radar, you have the two units. I just went in between. I'm going a, uh, a few tiles away from them. That way. Um, oh, and there's some trees and everything here. Huh? So that's cool. So I put it on this peninsula over here. On this tile. So we get out of this thing. So this is where I've chose to put the territory unit. It should be in our tile here. Actually, I might go one over just to get a, a combination. Um, so I'm going to set a destination there just to make sure I'll get in that tile. Um, which way is it? Okay, it's not showing. Oh, there it is. Let's um, get back in here. It's only a kilometer away. It's not that far. But we will just um, go over there a little bit. I think this would be a bit nicer. It's beachfront property. Can't get better than beachfront, can you? <laughs> and it's free. Okay, so I go to here. Yeah, there's some resources and stuff around here, which is good. So, um, okay, that's good. So we need to do the um, territory thing. I've got to remember how to do that now. Oh, there it is. So we're going to put it right here, because we want this node. We call it, um, I don't know, what should we call it? Coombsville? We can be really, <laughs> really weird and call it that. Yeah, let's just call it Coombsville. So if you play dual universe and go through Coombsville, yep, it's mine. I own it. Fantastic. You are now the proud owner of a territory tile on a sanctuary moon. Check it out in the map. This unlocks the possibility for you to mine or to harvest surface minerals awesome. within your tile. Go and harvest some materials on the surface to start with. We will then be able to go and sell it to make a bit of money. So we have all this in this tile here. I kind of done a mixture of um, sand and uh, the thing here, which, you know, which would be good. I think. So we get our mining tool out. And, uh. We can start harvesting stuff. It's just like pointing at it and left clicking. I don't think there's any animations yet. So that's some hematite. I'm just kind of doing a mixture of different stuff. Come on, give me some stuff. And you can uh, go into the nanoformer and you can build some stuff if you, you really need to. Um, but there's not much that we have here, to be honest. Without building a, some infrastructure. So we get our 400 bits and we go and sell it. at 50% of that right now. Let's see, I'm just trying to get a mixture. Let's see what's out there, what the prices are going to be. You don't know. You don't know, because it's player-driven economy. 
once you get used to the market and knowing what the prices are, it's a bit like Eve. You know what you what makes you the most money. Excellent. You have now collected a bit of valuable ore, and it's time to go and sell it. You can continue to mine if you prefer, but when you are ready, I've put a waypoint to the nearest market for you. You can also open the map and search for the little M icons on it to locate available markets. Yes, I can. So I'm just going to mine a bit more stuff. Um... Oh, I can't mind you. As you can see, there's tons and tons of resources around on these starter planets. You're not going to be striving. And then you can dig under the ground for them as well. You're not going to be struggling. Not to begin with. But we have a home. We have a territory unit up. Which is good. And I'll get a couple more around the speeder and then we'll head back to the market and then we will sell stuff. Just so we can get get this con uh, tutorial done and, and dusted. But I don't think I need to do it, but just in case you know, anything's changed. Uh, between the alpha and the beta that I'm not aware of. Which is possible. But... <sighs> See, there's trees over there, but I don't have any trees. I really wanted trees. I was hoping I'd have trees. Oh, well. This is uh, Kumi hoarding everything in sight. If you ever play an MMO with me or something like Scrap Mechanic, <laughs> and I have to go, uh, you know, go resource hunting, I, I just collect everything. I'm terrible. I end up with like 400 chests of stuff that I don't need. Alright, so let's have a look at the map and the nearest one should be the one we came from which is here. Which is fine. So we will um, no. we will go ahead and we'll set a waypoint over to there. Oh, she already did one, didn't she? So we don't need to do one, but we can go over there, that's not a problem. So, um, I'm wondering, did it put a bookmark in for my spot here? I think it would have done. Come on, move. The map seems to be a bit judgery at the moment, but I don't know, That's that could be me. Yeah, let's put a bookmark in just in case. Um, and we called it Coombsville, didn't we? Coombsville. Oh, we don't need information. And we will go ahead and get the speeder and we'll go over there and we'll sell this stuff and see what money we can make and what trouble we can get into over at the market. Oh, I really need to change that strafing. Which way is it? Oh, it is that way. It took a while for it just to show up then. Those hints are really in my way right now. Okay. Alright, off we go. Let's go make some money. It's going to take us about 20 seconds to get over there, but hey, it's all good. New talent unlocked. Okay, that must be... Uh, must be the uh, the bag upgrade that I did. I put another one in there, so I should be good. I'm not going to stop right now. And it doesn't take too much fuel to get there, so that's not too bad. I could probably make like two or two or three trips without having to refill, which is good. Which is good. So it's not too far away, but it's far away enough away from from you know from all the other mess that's out here. 
But with it being a sanctuary, there's no one that's really going to mess with you. Not player-wise, anyway. So, that's pretty good. It'll be fun once we get in. We create an org, or we join one, and then we start building on planets where the PvP is enabled. That will be good. I'm looking forward to that. But there's a little way we've got to do before that. green and purple armor I did. I, th I didn't think I did purple. I thought I did a different color. Oh well. That looks quite garish. <laughs> when I was picking it on the actual screen it didn't look that bad but oh my god. I wonder if I can change that. It's not too bad but hey. It's not too bad. I don't know whether I should floor it or not. <laughs> We're only using about 79% thrust. Because that's what it's set on. And you do have a cruise control as well. Which is handier when you're flying ships. Right, excuse me while I drink some coffee. Still can't believe it took like 50 minutes to get through that first bit of the tutorial just in the building. Like I was saying before, they they need to break that up into in, into bits. Like do a bit here, then then go and do something kind of fun, or even come to the Sanctuary Moon and then like show about mining and stuff, rather than doing it all there. Because you know I've done it before, but if I I'd only done it once trying to remember how to mine and stuff because that was like one of the first things because they fill your head with so much stuff maybe that's just me maybe I'm old you all can say Kumi you're too old you should be fired you shouldn't be playing dual universe if you can't remember sim simple things like that <laughs> Tell you what, I am really stoked. I've been waiting for this game for a long time. Like I've been waiting for Star Citizen to be what it can be, but that's going to be a while. Hopefully, uh, streaming-wise, this this will be a bit better. Actually, I'm not sure if I'm going to stream this or I'm going to make YouTube videos yet. I'm not sure because I have so much going on streaming-wise. I'm already streaming three days a week. Whether to add another fourth day. I don't know, because I make YouTube videos in between on the days off. And, you know, I have a life as well. <laughs> so I don't know. Uh, we'll figure it out. But so many people voted for me to play this. So, you know, I'm going to have to do it in some form or another. But I intended Grounded just to be a one-off. Kind of like No Man's Sky was. But now I've got people asking me to do that every week. And it's, uh, I don't know. Because this was going to replace Star Citizen because it was being so buggy. But um, Star Citizen had a major breakdown with trading, as a lot of you know. You know, we lost a lot of money. Um, and not even because of 30k, it was because, you know, the trading terminals, they, they didn't give, give you the money that it was supposed to. Um, so I needed to find a replacement a bit quicker than when the beta came out. Because this beta only came out on the 27th. Which I wanted to stream on the 27th, but I had issues with this as well, so. But it always, it, it is what it is. Um, we'll see, we'll work it out. Follow my Twitter at, at Kumiris Gaming and we'll, we'll figure it out. <laughs> or send me a message on Twitch. And uh, we'll figure out what I'm going to do. Because I don't think I want to replace any of the games that I'm playing at the moment that are my regulars um, which is Paladins and uh, Star Citizen uh, no not Star Citizen because I'm stopping that that's being replaced but um, Paladins and Scrap Mechanic I'm going to try and keep going alright we're nearly there and we've not even used a third of the 
Not even a fourth of the fuel. Lucky trees don't get in your way. Like someone's built quite a big like infrastructure behind me that we just went past. Um, that that was a player structure. Whoa. I don't remember how to get up here. I think it's over here. people are parked down here just go up there jeez you're littering you're littering with your speeders like literally so we're just gonna um i need to change these uh left and right to um your left and your right to actually strafing so we're gonna just go around here and um, i think i'm on top of some of the speeders so let's not stop there that probably wouldn't be good Let's go over here a little bit more. And we we get out here. Hopefully we didn't land on someone's speeder. No. Ah, oh, look at that bit of parking. Look at that. Awesome. <laughs> Good bit of parking there. Now head for a market pod and sell your harvested ore. If you are not quite sure how to use the market to sell, remember you can go to the market tutorials that are accessible inside the market building. I'll put a waypoint for you if you need to find them. So we're here so we can sell stuff if we want to. Um, um, I don't have any orders at the moment. Um, so if I go into my inventory. I can't remember how to do this. I thought you could just do it from your inventory. Is that changed now? Oh, I, I remember what I gotta do. I'm, I'm being derpy. So we have to go to the market container because that'll bring us our inventory now, isn't it? And then we can put these in here. And, um, how many do we have? I can't remember how many that, that was. 261. So we're just gonna do 260. Alright, we don't want that because we're gonna have a loss of 741. <laughs> so <laughs> we don't want to do that, and that's because of taxes and stuff. So we want to actually make some money because we're, we're paying 10 in. in uh, in tax, so I don't know what the I, I could actually check the market and see what the actual price is at the moment. So, so it's uh, box by oak site. So let's go here and we we'll search for I thought they changed that. Um, so the cheapest buy order is 20, but the sell orders that are going on for 15. So if we do 14, we're, we're, we're undercut some people. So I'm going to just do this one for 14, just for the fun of it. So we'll we'll make back um we'll make back some, so we'll just do. Oh we need a duration. We don't need a duration. Um let's just do uh, The problem is the more time you put on, kinda of like Eve, again I'm gonna refer back to that, is that you're gonna have more taxes the amount of time it's on the 
on the marketplace. I'm just going to do it for three days. So I, I don't expect anyone to buy it. It's, I'm just doing it for the tutorial. So we've placed that and we could sell some other stuff if we wanted. But, um, you know, we started off with nearly 300,000. So we should be all right, I think. And the question is, do they want me to instant sell? That That's the other question as well. I think she means she wants me to instant sell stuff and it's not going to go away unless I do that. So we're going to instant sell. Um, which is the best offer at the moment is 1276. So you can do this. Um, I have 180 of them. I'm just going to do uh, 60. No, I didn't put 180. I put 60. Come on. You're drunk, interface. You're drunk. I will let you finish with your selling, but when you are done, exit the market pod interface and find the dispenser that I have highlighted, marked with a waypoint, and activate it. It should be on the same floor or the floor just above or below. Okay. This dispenser is going to grant you a large amount of concrete voxel material at a super low price, which will come handy soon, as you are going to start to build your home. Yes, we are. We definitely are. So where's the lift to go upstairs? Because it's upstairs. I didn't see... Oh, is, it, is this one? No, it's a tutorial. We don't want a tutorial. We've had enough of tutorial. Oh, there it is. It's over there. It'd be the one you walk past, Coom. <laughs> Alright. No, that's a tutorial as well. Where is it then? Because there's the exit. I don't see one up going upstairs. Either I'm really lost or... Because it's definitely above me. It's not below me. Oh, this is all fun. Everyone's probably shouting, the, the lift's there, the lift's there. But I don't see it. Where is it? Where did you go? But I know where I came in at. But that, that just says to go down. It doesn't go up. Well, I can try, see if it goes up again. Oh, wait, no. Interesting. Very interesting. Hmm. Is there another lift downstairs? Let's go down to the bottom floor. I'm just going to go down here have a look. See if there's a lift down here somewhere. Um, does that go up or down? Neither. Okay, so... This is interesting. We have a signpost, but no no way to get there. Right, I don't think it's that one. Excellent. This is a start, <laughs> but you will need more elements oh before you are ready to build your house. It was this, but it's not. This again. isn't even marked. We are going to go shopping. What is going on? Okay. Activate any market pod. Alright. Great. I'm going to display a list of must have components for you to buy, displayed on the left. Go ahead and search for each component and buy them. Okay, Mom. Don't Give me my shopping list. More things, Give me my shopping like decorative list. elements to furnish the interior. You don't have to buy everything from this list. The only mandatory component is the core unit. If you don't have enough money, Try to sell more harvested ore, and possibly get back to your tile to harvest more. Just give me my shopping list. You, you didn't actually give me a shopping list, did you? Oh, there it is. Now it's there. Alright. Uh... At 15, 15, server may fix several issues, yeah, because it is going a bit weird at the moment. It should last about 30 minutes. The hardware continues. What's the time now? So... I don't know what it is in UTC at the moment. I think it's in about 30 minutes. All right, so I'm going to buy this stuff, and then we will... If we start getting moaned at to log out, then I will log out and have to end the stream. 
So, let's find a core unit. Obviously, we need one of those. Actually, we need a static core unit. Don't need a dynamic. Static. And um, we need an extra small. Oh, actually, let's go back. We just do an instant buy on it. It's just a lot easier. We're against time. We're against time, so we just want one of these. Vun. Yes. Take your time to finish buying what you want from the list. If you have lost the list, it's in the hint window. You, you can look. You're it saying up. that, Ophelia, but Once they want—they want to shut. Go collect your items from the market container into your inventory. Can you let me talk. Can you? Can you? Please. You say that, but they want to shut the servers down. All right. So sliding door. Sliding door small. We just want one of those for now. We're just going to go with one of everything. And um, we can always modify it later if we want to. And then we want a window. And we want a small window, I believe. Let's have a look at the list. Window small. Like, we can go for any other different windows, but I'm just, for the tutorial, because she's going to get funny, buy the shopping list. <laughs> it's just a lot easier. And we want one of those. Confirm. And we want a container to put stuff in. Yes, we do. Container, or oh, can't spell. Problem is, is that my mic is actually in front of my keyboard, so I'm having to duck around it to have a look. That's my excuse, and I'm sticking with it. So we want a container, small. Do that. You know, I could probably go with a large one. I've got quite a lot of money. <laughs> I don't know if that's because of um, I pledged or not. I'm not sure. I don't know what the normal starting amount is. Um, so we want a surrogate. Oh, go back. We want a pod as well, I think. A resurrection node. Get that. There's no sellers on the market. Okay. Is there a re resurrection node there? Yeah, they're quite a ways away, aren't they? Um, yeah. We don't actually need those, to be honest. Not not to begin with. It's like there's 1.83 away. But I'd have to go pick it up. I think I'll wait because we're on a time limit because they're going to be shutting the servers down. I'm not going to worry about that right now. I'm going to go ahead and pick up this stuff from the container. And then... Um, and then get back to where we need to go. Um, get that out of the way for now. Go to the market container. We need these. We just bought them. Oh, actually, I must have bought a resurrection node. I thought there wasn't one. Or it gave me one. I don't know. That's interesting. Oh, that one's selling, so we'll leave that there. Once you will be done with transferring your acquisitions, I encourage you to visit the Construction Institute and the building tutorial if you have not yet done so, since you will need this skill for the next step. I've added a waypoint to it, just in case. After this, simply open the map to find your tile, colored in green, and head back to your territory for the next step. Which, that's our tile right there. So we're, we're about slap down in the middle of quite a few markets, which is what I wanted, because there's not too much distance between them. Like, we're not all the way, you know, in the middle of something. Oh, I could have went up there. Oh, that's not too bad. It's not too bad. 
So I think what I'm going to do now is uh, it's supposed to be shutting down in 15 minutes. So I'm going to end the stream here because it came up saying it was going to shut down at 15, 15. So I'm going to end the stream here and I will try and pick it up again later um, after the servers are back. And uh, if not, I'll try and pick it up tomorrow. Um, hit me up on Twitter, which is at Kumiris Gaming. Let me know if it's something you want me to continue streaming. Or maybe I should make YouTube videos on it instead. Um, I'm not sure which one I'm going to do yet. So you can go ahead and follow me there and um, give me your opinion. And uh, if you don't, but then you'll at least see how it's, it's going to work out. But if it's going to be something regular scheduled, it will go in my uh, on my schedule. But we will see. Well, thank you for joining me in this first look at Dual Universe. Um, it's the first time I've ever played it on the beta. I uh, was in the alpha, um, as a lot of you do know. And uh, I will catch you on the next stream. And I will see you then. Bye-bye.